We did a video before of a win, and this time we're bringing you a loss. So, you know, we're, we're trying to keep things balanced, you know? Uh, losses are more useful to learn from because you can actually learn from your mistakes rather than just stroke your own ego. Um, but yeah, okay, so this is a game that started with e4. I responded with the French defense. Wow, the engine really doesn't like that. But yeah, um, so this is a standard Fran French defense advanced variation which I have a lot of experience with. Um, so yeah, pretty standard stuff so far. The game wants me to put the bishop there. I often don't put the bishop there, but maybe I should. Um, okay, I'm just used to all the uh, queen traps here. But yeah, nothing interesting has happened so far. Okay, so obviously this queen move we can take, and that's the best move. Because if we take this first, see this was an idea I had. You take this first, and then they take the knight, and then you take this. But then, of course, this knight is then attacking here. So it's actually better to just take with the queen, then they take, and then you're in a bit of a tricky situation because this is attacked by two pieces. Why is that arrow there? What the fuck? Okay, hold on. Oh, I see. That was just a holdover from the last turn. Okay, so... Yeah, so this was being attacked by two pieces, so I moved the bishop to defend it. So far, pretty uninteresting opening, to be honest. Um, yeah, so pretty standard stuff so far. This was my first mistake. The game didn't like this. Uh, and I understand why, because it's weakening uh, my king here. And my pawn structure is kind of whack now. The knight can take this, which is what they do. I missed that, so yeah, that was my first mistake. A big one, anyway. Uh, okay, so the rook goes here because we want to defend this square. Worried about a fork there. Um, then they take, which is good for me because it lets me get this knight out. Then they're attacking this diagonal with the bishop, and they can apply more pressure with this knight. And this is also attacking that diagonal, so not looking too good for me. I move the king here, which the engine actually likes, which I'm glad for. Um, this is to try and boot out this knight. See, we're ending up having to play kind of aggressively with our king, because that's just how the game has gone. Um, okay, so the bishop takes there, then I take, uh, I don't know why the bishop took the kind of random move. Um, okay, there I had one pawn, this knight's in a very annoying place, I'm having to constantly try and boot the knight out and stuff. Uh, so this time I just move the bishop up here because it gets the bishop in a stronger spot. And here I was thinking of plans. I was thinking of something like this. Rook g8 and then you move this pawn up. They take the pawn. Rook takes and they're in a nasty spot with a revealed check. We do all sorts of shenanigans there. Uh, including checkmate. In fact I think that would have been checkmate. Uh, assuming everything went as I wanted it to which it rarely does. Okay, so they moved that rook there. They preferred to get that rook out, which makes more sense because this rook is really not doing anything. And it's going to be better to get that there or that there even and just leave the F F1 there because at least it's defending the F pawn. Uh, and you can always get it out later on. But this one is kind of completely useless. Um, okay, so what was this about? So once again, the rook wanted me to move my h pawn rather than the c. I mean, h rook rather than c rook because this was because this one was already active, and this one was passive. Uh, but I didn't want to move the rook there because I was still sort of attached to this plan. Um, okay, so the bishop. I mean, the knight goes there. Uh, I respond with bishop here. I wasn't sure of this move at the time, but the engine likes it. Uh, okay. Yeah, so right now they're slightly ahead, but it's it's 
still pretty close. It's anyone's game. And now after that, we take advantage of this little maneuver. Take this pawn. And I actually didn't see that they can, unfortunately, defend this rook. Uh, so yeah, the engine didn't like me trading there. And then we get into a nasty situation here where we uh, we have this weak bishop and it's about to get a lot weaker. And this is kind of where the game falls apart actually. One maneuver that favoured me, but <sighs> what are you thinking? What's this? What the hell is this? So obviously I was trying to get an attack in here, but it's an ineffectual attack because they can just move to this file. And there's no way I'm going to be able to control both files with one rook. Which I noticed afterwards. And you know, the problem with this is, of course, it's blocking this bishop's path. Not good. Yep, and then the screwing of my bishop is complete. Maybe people saw that earlier, that this bishop was in trouble. Uh, I don't know why I didn't see it, but yeah, the bishop's trapped. The eval bar says white's ahead now, and I'm going to try and salvage it, poorly salvage it. I mean, what, what was that maneuver there? Pretend I'm going to defend, well I think I was defending, because I was like, oh my god, I've got to save this bishop, even though the bishop's screwed. Like, even if it's still defended, it's just trapped, unless I can somehow get it, like, reroute it, but yeah, I would have to keep it defended the whole time. And that would basically just be a pinned rook. Um, so I think the better option would have just been to let the bishop die. Uh, but yeah, not good. So obviously then they come in with a rook. And this now has two attackers and only one defender. So I end up moving the pawn. Because I'm like, well I can't really defend this. I want to get this rook somewhere else. And it's like, well why even bother putting your rook there in the first place? If you're just going to end up moving it again in a couple of turns. Um, so yeah, that was the start of the end, basically. And the rest of the game is kind of just me being behind, to be honest. Um, let's see how it goes, anyway. Um, okay, so the, the engine liked that. Me just trying to make some kind of pawn advance. Now, I wasn't sure if the engine would like this, because basically what I'm trying to do is stop this king from getting to my pawns um but of course the downside of this is that this king is also being blocked off by their king it's what we call opposition but yeah okay so rook there obviously threatening this pawn there very nasty very bad move i was kind of desperate i was i was like thinking there isn't really much i can do here and yeah, after making that exchange there, uh, that ex taking there would have been better, which I did re realize after the fact. But yeah, I was trying to go up here, but I knew they were just going to hit me with this. And this, there's nothing you can do, you know? Um, once again, this opposition is a problem for me. This, Although even then, the rook is defending as well. So there's really nothing I can do, you know? Nowhere I can go to defend this pawn. So this pawn storm has been a failure. But it, it was an attempt, at least. And yeah, we move the king down here because I'm trying to free up this rook. Because right now the rook doesn't really have any options apart from here. Um, and then we move this pawn, which the engine does like too. But then we're in this problem again where the rook has nowhere to go, really. Now the only place it can go is here. And this is where I'm sort of in a position of... Um, Zugzwang, I think. Where... where um, where all of Black's position, all of Black's moves weaken their position. Oh, well, it can be either side, but in this case, it's me, Black. So we're in a position here where, because everything is so limited, the pawn can move there, and then it gets taken. This pawn can't move at all. This pawn can't move at all. The the rook can only move there, and the king can only move away from the action. So it's not looking good. We do end up moving the rook there because we want to free up this pawn's movement. They push this pawn. We move the king over here. I'm not sure what the logic behind that was. 
they move that pawn, threatening my rook, and proceeding with this pawn storm. Rook here, take, take. That was bad, because the fork. Yep. Very silly, very silly move. As you can see here, didn't take long to make that move. It says 6 seconds, but it was actually like 19 seconds. But yeah, I mean, you gotta look for forks. But yeah, so the game went from being probably lost anyway to being completely lost. Uh, and now, you know, there's really nothing left to do. Really. Uh, the engine likes my moves here because whatever I do, I'm screwed. So it doesn't matter what I do, it's a great move. But yeah. So that's the end of the game. So the two points which really screwed me were this fork, which is just like a classic blunder, and the situation with the bishop on h2. Uh, you see, this kind of trick that I did here, the taking the h pawn to free up the, the revealed attack, this isn't a, a, a trick that I've done particularly often, so um, I think that's why it backfired on me, because I just didn't see the g3 play even though obviously in hindsight it looks pretty pretty obvious that there's a threat there but yeah okay um that's all as i said in the last video i'm trying to keep this sh these short uh let me know in the comments if you've got this far if you prefer deeper analysis or less deep analysis or a fine with where it is because obviously i could go more into various variations and stuff but for one, that would involve a lot of like looking at the engine and trying to interpret what it's saying. And also, um, it would make the videos much longer. And I think like 10 minutes around that length is, is a good, is a good length. But yeah, let me know what you think. Adios.